Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. <sighs> you know, ever get that feeling that whenever you see a movie this horrible and painful, that it just makes you feel very unclean inside, that you just can't escape from all the madness that's about to happen? Well, that's how I felt when I saw the movie Mikey, the 1992 film that basically what it really is. The bad seed of the 90s. Yep, a young, sweet, innocent kid who may have turned out to be a serial killer. For those who don't love the guy, he comes up with his own revenge. Wiping all the adopted parents in the entire world. Just like that. Well, I actually saw this dreadful film back when I was like very young. And now, I already knew who the actor was. You have Brian Bonsell, who's been best known uh, back in the eight, late 80s and early 90s as a young child actor who actually played um, the young son uh, by the name of Andrew Keaton, or Andy for short, on, on Family Ties, the TV show that made. Michael J. Fox, a star. Yeah, and I used to watch that show a lot when it was on NBC and later in syndication and in reruns with all of the episodes. Yeah, it's a very good show. He also went on TV series Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, yeah who was, of course, uh, Lieutenant Wolf's son. Very good. And what's even more amazing, though, is that I used to see him a lot in in those eight, 80s and 90s commercials all the time too, and especially the Basket Robbins one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually had uh, one of the commercials, by the way, on tape. And believe it or not, I actually met the actor. That's right. Uh, back when I was uh, six years old, um, in 1991, I remember joining a dance program at my elementary school called Dance Outreach. It's a dance program where I actually did used to do a lot of dancing over there so we could start dancing on stage. And we were doing that actually. We we were wearing all these costumes and we started doing all these moves. You know, I was with my brother at the time, you know, Jason. Well, surprisingly enough, we met the actor. And we took a picture of him too, which was really cool. Um, in fact, we still have the picture on, on our photo album that my family actually has, where you show a picture of my brother Jason with Brian Bonsall. It's a very cute picture. In fact, it's already on Facebook, by the way, my Facebook page. Yeah. Too bad it wasn't a perfect snapshot, because it was taken from my mother's phone. Yeah, That was like over 20 years ago. Um, Brian, of course, as of now, is already going through troubles, um, as we speak, yeah, at a very young age, old, very, um, like, in his late 20s at the time, when he was, he actually formed a band, and then suddenly he went on to commit some crime, you know, it's hard to believe, um, and as of 2014, um, I haven't heard anything from him, it's amazing. Well, given that, after this movie, um, he actually went on to do the film Blank Check. Um, now that movie I did enjoy as a kid. Yeah, it, it is. It does sound like a ridiculous premise. You know, a kid, you know, basically wants a um, million dollars after he receives a blank check from a guy who just uh, ran over his bike. Anyway, Mikey is just as bad as the good son but even twice as worse it feels like a TV movie of the week type of material and it's done in a very poorly way you just can't escape it so here it goes the movie stars once again Brian Bonsall with Joey Bissett Ashley Lawrence Mimi Craven John Deal Good Hefford Lyndon Ward David Rogue, Mark Benetorini, and Laura Robertson. 
and it's directed by by Dennis Dempster Dink. That's right. That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well let's let the bloody massacre begins. And how's this for the first act? The movie begins when a 10-year-old kid named Mikey Halt, who's played by Brian Bonsall, is first seen lighting papers on fire in the garage with his 5-year-old stepsister named Beth. When Mikey's foster mother named Grace Kellen had, had arrived on the scene, she started uh, punishing him for what he has done and has taken Beth away from him. Mikey has really hated his adopted parents so much that he decided to create his own sweet revenge against them by dumping Beth's doll into the swimming pool as Beth tries to get the doll by being on top of the diving board as Mikey started jumping on it constantly until all of a sudden she fell in and drowned. Meanwhile, Mikey had came in and spotted his mother on the bathtub and has soon had get this had dumped an electronic hair dryer inside the bathtub and completely frying her to death as he actually found out that she hated him or what he seems. Then his father arrived at home and so and all of a sudden he has slipped into tons of silver marbles on the floor crashing into the back door of the window and then suddenly Mikey has taken a baseball bat and slamming it violently in the head until the blood started rushing. Soon the police had arrived on the scene with Detective Reynolds and a social worker named Catherine had actually spotted Mikey hiding in the closet claiming that a man had came in the house and killed his adopted parents. Give me a break. Well, that's only the beginning, but it gets even worse. As Mikey winds up in the doctor lying about his side of the story, and Grace's sister decided not to adopt Mikey because of his crazy behavior that he has. So they wind up having a couple named Rachel and Neil Trenden to adopt him so that way he could finally have a new life of his own. Um, during that one day, he decided to take care of the baby fish inside the couple's aquarium. He meets uh, the neighbor next door who is about the same age as him, named Ben, who actually soon became the best of friends. He also meets a new teacher named Sean Glider, who is also Rachel's friend. And Neil, of course, has taken Mikey to an archery range where he's actually very natural using a bow and arrow and starts shooting. During his first day of class, uh, Mikey has learned about a new uh, game called Marble Time in which a student had dumped in a, a collection of marbles inside the box and you open the door inside to win a prize. Well, Mikey was very concerned about this that he wanted to do it himself. He also had some very good drawing skills when he drew a swimming girl, which might be a symbol of, of being very good. Because after school, Ben had brought Mikey over to his house after they went to a cemetery. And talking about what was it like if, <laughs> if you actually die. Yeah, they really come up with stupid scenes like this. Not before long, uh, Ben actually brought in a photograph of his older sister named Jessie, who was a college student away, along with her boyfriend named David. On the next day, after class, Mikey had finally added marbles to his collection, and when Sean had saw exactly what, what had happened, that's what became one of the biggest incidents of all time, is when Mikey finally snaps, he decided to use his psychotic behavior by drawing, get this, a turkey you know, with an axe, chopping the pilgrim's head. <laughs> yeah, and he actually shows the picture to, to a guy named Jenkins. 
Well, that's when things started to get even much worse. Was when Jesse arrives at home, only pretending that Mikey is unconscious, and which apparently Jesse decided to give him a mouth-to-mouth mutation, -mouth yeah, CPR, and he wakes up and pretends that all this was a joke in order for them to fall in love. Yeah, kind of messed up, isn't it? After finding the investigation on Mikey's adopted parents being murdered, it turned out it wasn't the man who actually killed them. It's actually him himself. Well, it gets even worse because now, by the time they find out his secret, his very dark secret, he started writing the new set of parents along with all the other guys. Uh, even before all this had happened, he actually kills Jesse's cat, only pretending that his boyfriend uh, actually ran over with a truck. Yep since he was steaming with jealousy he was really in love with Jesse so much but you're gonna love what's happening next because by that time Mikey actually kills uh, Rachel by pushing her right straight to the balcony and falling into her death and then all of a sudden once they found out about this you know Jenkins and Sean came around and you know, Jenkins was about to take the gun I'm about to shoot Mikey until all of a sudden Mikey had brought in his bow and arrow and actually shoots him. After that he also brought in, get this, a slingshot with a marble inside and actually slingshots um, his teacher in the forehead. Yeah, as the, as you, you can see the marble, you know, panning all the way straight to the, to the screen. Yeah, and, and actually kills her. He had soon had dragged the bodies um, and had taken them to the di dining table and then he decided to make a phone call you know, dressed up um, you know, looking casual and stuff you know, calling uh, Jesse on the phone you know, asking him for a date well Jesse had soon had found out what happened and and he actually refuses to go out with Mikey so Suddenly, Neil finally came in at home, only to find out that about Jesse on top of the bedroom, only to warn Neil that that Mikey is dangerous. So once Neil finally went inside the house, he found the entire couple inside the dining room already dead. He also threw in the child skeleton inside, and guess what happens next? Neil actually screams in horror. And Mikey actually dumps a bottle, uh, a flaming bottle, uh, as he already turned on the gas already. <laughs> um, he actually threw in the flaming bottle inside the house and causes a huge explosion. <laughs> then all of a sudden, the fireman had arrived on the scene, you know, questioning you know, Ben and Jesse about about the victims inside the house and also uh, only to discover that, that one of the victims um, might be Mikey that's inside the house claiming if he's dead or not well it turns out that he was suffering from amnesia and as soon has been given a new name and a new identity named Josh and wants up in the same doctor's room with another, once again, adopted parents. And guess how the, the movie ends? He wants up saying his line, Are you going to be my new mommy and daddy? Yeah, this, this, of course, this whole not again cliche. And then the movie ends. Oh, God. What a piece of crap. What a piece of crap this movie really is. Everything from the beginning to the middle to the end, you know everything was going to go wrong. And it's so painful to watch that I can't believe I had to sit for this at a very young age. I was only about, I believe, seven or eight years old when I first saw this movie, and it sucked completely. That I, I never know which is worse, this movie or The Good Son. Well, I gotta admit though, 
Compared to the good son, this one was way worse. How on earth did this movie got made is beyond me. But I was kind of amazed of how everything turned out. I mean, now I know Brian Bonso was actually very good when it comes to playing you know, different roles, but this role that he played in is done in a very, very strange way. That there are times when you actually love him, but then there are other times when you, when you don't. So you know you hated him completely. Um, I feel, in fact, I even felt sorry for the actors who got involved in this mess. I mean, yes, this movie had tons of bad acting all the way around. Um, a lot of shoddy images that they went into it. A lot of bad uh, slow motion scenes. And, you know, and all this other crap. Um, really done in a very cheaply way. That it almost felt like it's it's one of those TV movie of the week material in that sort of way. Um, and, and, and it's horrible. It's hard to believe that, you know... Brian Bonso had uh, came a long way from Family Ties to star in a film this bad, and I wouldn't believe it myself. Everything from the movie was just as bad as it can be. No, no doubt a question, everything in the movie didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. How on earth did, did Mikey have get away with murder um, scene after scene after scene? It's just amazing, you know. I, I'm I'm amazed that no one had had actually found out about all this. So they thought, yeah, maybe it was a man that actually killed them. It's just dumb. Um, the the writing of this film is is a complete mess and a complete joke all the way around. Sure, there were some nice scenes that they throw in into the mix. You know, such as taking them to all these uh, places. You know, like. Where he actually get to have all the fun he needed and, and wanted, just to make him feel better. Yeah, I mean, all this uh, happy stuff that they throw in, and it just seems to go completely wrong, and it, and it's so messed up in so many ways. In fact, there was even one scene in which Mikey steaming with jealousy, since he loves Jesse so much that he actually dumps. Get this, he dumps a boombox inside the jacuzzi and suddenly David has already already been you know fried to death the same way that his adopted mother was in the beginning of the film so this is once again his sweet revenge against his jealousy what a stupid move that he had to pull in. even though you know the boyfriend did sort of acted like a jerk at times did he have to go this far unbelievable yeah, that's how bad this movie really was, and it's no doubt a question. It's one of the worst movies of 1992, and I've seen plenty of worse movies that followed after that. So, without a doubt, um, avoid this movie at all costs. Even if you're a big fan of Brian Bonsall or whatever he does, um, this movie's not for you. In fact, I'd rather watch Blink Check over this piece of crap any day of the week. That's for sure. So anyway, I give this dreadful piece of shit movie named Mikey horribly and physically one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.